Good day everyone! In this video, we will discuss about related rates. What is related rates? A related rates problem concerns the relationship among the rates of change of several variables with respect to time, given that each variable is also dependent on the others. Here are the suggested steps in solving problems involving related rates. For the first one, if possible, provide an illustration for the problem that is valid for any time t. Next step, identify those quantities that change with respect to time and represent them with variables. Step 3, write down any numerical facts known about the variables. Interpret each rate of change as the derivative of a variable with respect to time. Remember that, if a quantity decreases over time, then its rate of change is negative. Step 4. Identify which rate of change is being asked and under what particular conditions this rate is being computed. Step 5. Write an equation showing the relationship of all the variables by an equation that is valid for any time t. Step 6. Differentiate the equation in step 5 implicitly with respect to t. And step 7, substitute into the equation obtained in step 6 all the values that are valid at the particular time of interest. Sometimes, some quantities still need to be solved by substituting the particular conditions written in step 4 to the equation in step 6 then solve for what is being asked in the problem. Let us apply these steps in solving some related rates problems. For the first example, a water droplet falls onto a steel pond and creates concentric circular ripples that propagate away from the center, assuming that the area of a ripple is increasing at a rate of 2 pi centimeters squared per second. Find the rate at which the radius is increasing at the instant when the radius is 10 centimeters. For the step 1, this is our illustration of a circle with radius r. For the step 2, let A be the area of the circle, r be the radius of the circle, and T be the time. Step 3. Given that the area of a ripple is increasing at the rate of 2 pi centimeters squared per second, the given rate of change will be dA over dt is equal to 2 pi. Step 4. Find dR over dt when r is equal to 10. Step 5. Recall the formula for the area of a circle that is A is equal to pi r squared. Step 6. Differentiate A is equal to pi r squared applying the chain rule. dA over dt is equal to pi times 2r dr over dt. Substitute dA over dt which is equal to 2 pi and r that is equal to 10 and simplify. So we had dA over dt equals pi times 2r dr over dt we will have 2 pi equals pi times 2 times 10 dr over dt. Simplifying, we will get 2 pi equals 20 pi dr over dt. Dividing both sides by 20 pi to solve for dr over dt, we will get dr over dt that is equal to 1 over 10. Thus, the radius of a circular ripple is increasing at the rate of 1 over 10 cm per second. Another example, a ladder 10 meters long is leaning against a wall. If the bottom of the ladder is being pushed horizontally towards the wall at 2 meters per second, how fast is the top of the ladder moving when the bottom is 6 meters from the wall? For step 1, we have this illustration. Notice that the ladder 
is 10 centimeters long. If it will be pushed horizontally towards the wall at 2 meters per second, what we need to find is the rate of change of the top of the ladder that moves when the bottom is 6 meters from the wall. For the step 2, let x be the distance between the bottom of the ladder and the wall, and y be the distance between the top of the ladder and the ground. Step 3. We are given that dx over dt is equal to negative 2. Observe that this rate is negative since the quantity x decreases with time. Step 4. We want to find dy over dt at the instant when x is equal to 6. Observe that the wall, the ground, and the ladder determine a right triangle. With this, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to establish the relationship between x and y. That is, x squared plus y squared equals 100. We did get 100 because the length of the ladder is equal to 10, and 10 squared is equal to 100. Step 6. Differentiate x squared plus y squared equals 100. So we will get 2x dx over dt plus 2y dy over dt is equal to 0. Step 7. Solve for the missing variable y by substituting x equals 6 to the equation above. And that will be 6 squared plus y squared equals 100. And 6 squared is equal to 36. So, y squared will be equal to 100 minus 36 that is equal to 64. Thus, y is equal to 8. Now, substitute the other given dx over dt that is equal to negative 2, x that is equal to 6, and y that is equal to 8 to 2x dx over dt plus 2y dy over dt which is equal to zero that we have solved to be the derivative of x squared plus y squared equals 100 and solve for dy over dt. That is, we will get 2 times 6 times negative 2 plus 2 times 8 dy over dt that is equal to zero. Simplifying, we will get negative 24 plus 16 dy over dt is equal to zero. 16 dy over dt is equal to 24 when we isolate negative 24 on the right side of the equation. Dividing both sides by 16, we will get dy over dt that is equal to 24 over 16 which is equal to 3 halves. Thus, the distance between the top of the ladder and the ground is increasing at the rate of 1.5 meters per second. I hope that you have understood the lesson. For our next video, we will discuss about the antiderivatives. Thank you so much for listening and see you on our next discussion.